Hey, good morning, guys. My name is Eugene Lee. I'm a regional sales manager with Anajet. Um, we've got quite a few people on here. Feel free to ask questions as we go, and um, I'll do my best to answer them through the presentation. Right up front, guys, the way that I do things is I don't want to read slideshow stuff, okay? So let's be a little bit interactive, and I'll try to make it short and sweet. Uh, I imagine about 30 to 40 minutes total. The super unique thing that we have going on today is we have Nick Damon on board. Um, I'll formally introduce him in, this, uh, in a few slides, but um, he's a great customer of mine. And he bought a printer about, I don't know, I'd say about a month and a half ago. Nick, are you on? Can you, can you talk? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Okay. So that's Nick Damon, guys. He's live. Um, he, he's, he's real. And uh, again, I'll formally <laughs> introduce him as we, as we get through this. But the reason that we have Nick on is I'm a sales guy, you know, and I wear that hat, but I truly believe in my product. Um, but Nick, right off the bat, the one thing that I told him when we got started was, you're going to do well, you're going to rock, and um, you'll pay off your printer. He ended up paying for an MP10, swiped it right onto his credit card. That's right, Nick, you put it on a credit card, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, he'll tell you about the good, the bad, the ugly, but mostly the good, of course, about what is involved in our process and why our technology is so amazing. So let's get through a few of these slides and we'll get to Nick. Um, and Nick, please feel free to, to interject, say what you need to say, if, and if I kind of go off on a tangent, bring me back. Sure thing, you got it. Cool. Um, here's the agenda, guys. This is what we want to cover. It's basic stuff about our space. Um, so I'll let you guys read through that. And at the end, you guys can ask questions, of course, or you can click on the chat button and ask away, and I'll do my best to answer them. So what are we? I like to say we're the Tesla, the Apple, um, all the new, smart, technology-based companies. They've taken an old idea, and they brought it forward just through, through being digital. Um, the truth is this. It's diversify or die. Um, you know, my dad did screen printing for 22 years. I was with him at the end for the last four. Uh, and I was free labor. I was probably, my brother Mike and I were 10 or 11 at the time, and we drove to downtown LA with my dad every Saturday, um, and we, we literally made t-shirts, and I remember being, you know, having ink on me, there was glitter, it was, it was horrible, but uh, you and I had my more dad, than I thought then. <laughs> right? So, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see that um, people like my dad would have never understood what we do. They only understood screen printing, and back then he was doing sewing and cutting as well. Uh, and, you know, I go to trade shows often, guys, and nothing's really changed. It's still the same archaic equipment. You know, some have gotten faster and bigger. They have a humongous footprint, but nothing's really changed when it comes to apparel design. Um, so by you taking on technology and by you diversifying, you'll see how, you, A, you can make money. But... The truth is this, it's supply and demand. People like Nick Damon, whether it's because he's young and he gets it, or just because he knew he didn't want to die in his space, he realized that if you come on board early, you have less competition. And if you have less competition, you have more money to make and take more. You can create a, a, a stronger brand out in the market. Um, and obviously, with the invention of the, the web and social media, um, it's getting pretty competitive out there. So it still continues to be a $44 billion industry, guys. Um, and 23 of that is us. It's, it's garment decoration. And a lot of the people are still old school. 95% are still screen printing. There's nearly 60,000 of them out in the United States. So just imagine every Wendy's, McDonald's, Carl's Jr.'s, and everything else. You know, it's, There's just a lot of competition out there. Nick, did you do screen printing before you jumped on board with Anajet? I uh, never printed a shirt prior to two months ago. Done. So Nick brings um, a really unique pers perspective versus screen printers. Um, you know, we'll go more into it, but he comes from offset printing, large format printing, right? Right, Nick? Yeah, we're primarily uh, 70, 60 to 70% commercial offset printing and 30% digital. 
and there you go. So why would someone like that come over on board, never printed a t-shirt, probably got asked a few times, hey, do you do this, can you do that? And I think it was probably the, the number of times that he said no, that he realized that he was probably leaving some, some money on the table. So here's the challenges that are, have been historic. Um, you guys can read off through that. The, the, the big thing that you, I want everyone to take away from this webinar is this. We do not, Anijet does not, direct to garment as a, as a whole does not compete against screen printing yet. As of right now, our markets are completely different, meaning our clientele base and to whom we speak to. And I'm talking about Nick. The, the NICs of the world, the people that use and run Anajets and make money with them, they don't compete against screen printers. Screen printers actually become their clients, and it's simply because of this. With screen printing, you want high quantity orders, right? Number, large number of t-shirts, and low colors. That's the only way you can justify burning screens, getting into all the mess, and all the setup is you need a lot of t-shirts and you don't want to burn too many screens. DTG is different. Through technology, we want you to order one T-shirt with 10 million colors on it, but we're going to charge you a lot of money, and there's no lead time with us. Nick can have a shirt ready to go with you if you give him the graphic in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, done. You will pay a premium, but he can do that for you right then and there. So every, all those key points, you need high production, you need low colors, and you need long lead times. It's completely opposite of what DTG does. So we, Anajet, okay, we're, we're, we're proud of a few things. Um, we're the number one, in the, number one in the industry by far. We're the only U.S. manufacturer. We offer free firmware and software upgrades for life. We offer free technical support for life. And we offer free training for life. Um, all these things come with the printer, and we're happy to do that. We're here to support you. I think Nick and I probably email each other. I don't know, Nick, once every other day, CC-wise or anything else, right? Yeah, about average. That's about right. Okay, and I have, um, in my, my book of business, 15 NICs. Some are not as bright as Nick. Some are bigger in, in, in reference to, to the size of their business than Nick. But they all started off somewhere, and we've grown together. Um, and there's a lot of feedback when you, when you buy a printer from Anajet, of course. The, the key point on this slide is this, guys. Profit margins are about 75% if you go to retail, which is something that I really uh, want people to do. And if you do contract jobs as well, you're not going to make the 75%, but you're still going to make more money than screen printers. Um, Nick, where are you running your, your – what's your setup like over there? Uh, we have a small room for the PC with the, uh, the ripstop for on it. And just that's right beside it, and then we have a heat press right there. Uh, I'm actually in the process of getting a second heat press so we can treat basically in one station and then print the other station to kind of um, – we've just been getting kind of backed up, only having one heat press with orders. So we're hoping that the second heat press can allow, you know, one person to treat, one person to print, and just kind of improve our workflow. But, I mean, it's not, it's not a lot of space. It doesn't take a whole lot of, of footprints, you know, to, to do what we're doing. Right, so um, the, the smallest you guys need is about a 10 by 10, uh, but we have people that run these in humongous warehouses, and they have lines and lines and rows and rows of, of Empower machines. Um, so we start off small. Nick and, Nick and I talked about this at length. He'll eventually get to, what would you say, Nick, about four printers, you think, eventually? I would hope so, yeah. Yeah. Um, a really good thing about our printers is this. It's, um, it's a good marketing device. So because there's no ease, uh, excuse me, there's no difficulty in setting up the equipment, getting the logo ready, you could literally have a marketing piece, a giveaway, where someone will take that shirt and they'll never throw it away. And you can impress them with a $3 cost to acquire a customer. You can print something out, custom T-shirts, no minimum orders, your logo here. Call me now. You'll have it by, I don't know, Friday. You know, here's Anajet's market share. We have 60%. I believe we're growing. I can tell by the months that we've been having as a company, and we have um, we have people out there that um, bring us back information. 
So we are obviously growing at the 60% here. A lot of that has to do with a lot of people are consolidating. Uh, one of the big things that's going out in our space right now is um, Epson has come on board. Um, historically, a lot of people have modified Epson paper printers. Um, and some have done a, a decent job and a good job, and some of them uh, have absolutely Frankenstein them. But in the end, Epson came on board. They are telling people, either distrib distribute our product and get rid of yours, or don't do anything at all. So now we're going to have Epson coming in. Um, they will eventually make a great printer, a great printer. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great run company. Uh, but Anajet, we've, we've been doing this for a long time, and it's all we do. So um, we welcome the competition. I can, I can interject some information there if you like. Please. Um, I actually, when we looked at, at purchasing, we, we looked at the Epson. And um, the, the, the one issue was I couldn't find anybody to talk to me. I called. We're, we're 70 miles east of Pittsburgh. I talked to two people in Philadelphia. And uh, the one, there was supposed to be an Epson vendor. And uh, the one guy told me they're not selling them. And the other guy told me to give me some pricing. So, I mean, you're, you're not dealing directly with Epson. You're not talking to someone from Epson. You're talking to someone that sells the Epson machine for Epson. So that was the one at least turn off for us that, you know, when I'm talking to Angie, I'm talking to Angie. I'm not talking to someone who just sells your machines. you got to sell your own machines. Just a little FYI there. No, it's, and it's true. Um, you know, we're, as of right now, they haven't gotten things right. Um, and it's not their fault. DTG as an industry, it's difficult. It's difficult to get textile ink to shoot out of nozzles on, a, on essentially a paper printer. And that's all Epson is doing. They're still taking their same platform, which is their R4880, I believe is the latest model number. It's a great paper printer. And they're asking it to print on t-shirts. Thicker than I have one. Oh, yeah, right? So uh -huh. it, it, if, you, if you Google that image of the Epson R4880 versus all the other modified Epsons out there, it's still the same printer. I mean, some of it, it looks like all they did was remove the, the emblem. Um, and and it, it's not a bad thing. You know, Epson's coming into the market for a few reasons. Number one, it, it's profitable, which is a good thing. It's a good sign for everyone here. But B, they're sick and tired of their, their printers getting Frankenstein. And so they'll eventually get it right. Um, I don't know when that's going to be. They've delayed shipment a few times. I heard they're, they're launching now, um, but you need a lot of support. You literally need people there. You need their techs there. And not to go too far into it, guys, if, you, if you're talking to a regional manager, you've probably heard them talk about this. We use Ricoh Gen 4 stainless steel heads. Again, we use 100% stainless steel heads that can take the pressure of these fluids getting shot out of, of the print heads. We knew we couldn't use Epson plastic printheads. And as of right now, they're still giving away plastic printheads for free when you purchase. How long that's going to last, I don't know. I mean, they're almost $1,000 a piece from last I heard. So um, you know, we focus strictly at Anajet at building Empower machines, MP5s and MP10s, MP5s and MP10s. That's it. And we'll, we don't go into any other SKUs. We don't involve ourselves in heat press machines or anything like that. This is all we're uber focused on. So I, I think it's just best to go with the company that uh, is a leader. Commercial printers, I guess this is where, where Nick is, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you wanted to elaborate on the screen, I'll, I'll let you talk now. Sure. Um, I guess just a couple things for us is definitely uh, the similarity of our current workflow basically just outputting to a new device. Um, we didn't want to get into having to create color separations for um, something on the screen printing side. We have you know, a couple thousand customers that we already have completed our work for, we've been dealing with for years. And uh, we saw this as a way to take what we already have and basically apply it to a different substrate at pretty good margins and uh, be able to take you know, say yes to our customers we've been saying no to and uh, expand some newer to markets as well. So that was, uh, but the, the usability was one thing and definitely the, uh, the workflow just kind of married to what we already had was a, was a big selling point for us. And I hear that a lot, guys. Um, I think the commercial guys, okay, so let me, let me take a step back here because I know this is being recorded, sorry. The screen printer guys don't really get us. They see us as competition instead of evolution. I think People like Nick, 
bigger printers, maybe even bigger wallets is the best way of putting it too, but they've used technology and they need technology in order to stay ahead of, of the game. They get it quicker. Um, and again, it's that parallel. It's Nick said no, guys. That's a big thing. I want you to understand one another key point here. Whatever business you're in, but let's talk about garment design as as a as a as an example here. If I'm a customer and I go to Nick Damon's shop and I walk in and I say, hey, you know, I need this done, but by the way, do you do t-shirts? He says no. Okay? He says, no, I don't do it. I don't, you know, how am I going to put your kid on a t-shirt? That makes no sense. So he sends her away. Doesn't think two cents about it. Wait, I'm using her as me. Okay, so I'm, I'm a guy now. So, okay, so I walk away. And the first thing I'm going to do logically on my phone or on my PC is I'm going to log in custom t-shirts. The first five customers are going to pop up. Zazzle.com, CafePress.com, CustomInc.com. You know, Anajet actually might pop up there. And you'll see these long fulfillment companies of uber personalized apparel are going to pop up on the screen. And I will click on one of them. Okay? I'll click on them. Let's say I go to Cafe Press. I click on it and I order a t-shirt. A, all I do is drag and drop. Same thing that Nick does with his RIP software. I'll drag and drop the image that I want, place it onto a t-shirt, it's a really great website. Click on it, click on it. I get charged 30 bucks for it. 30 bucks for a t-shirt, and I'm happy. Why? No one else is doing it for me, okay? I get it in the mail, exactly how I order it, done. That's not where the story ends. What happens from that point on is this. Now, Cafe Press has your guys' information, has my information. I will start getting emails every week, every week, specials. We can do mugs, hats, we can do pillowcases, canvas art, we can even do your iPhone case, we'll do your printing too. You know, Vistaprint will now print all of your, your paper that you need too. So Nick not only lost a t-shirt order and kept all of everything in house, he now potentially lost every printed order in the future because all these big companies are, are wonderful marketing companies, plain and simple. They have million-dollar websites. They started off at, at a $500 website, and they've grown. And the vast majority of these clients are Anajet users, and we've built them, and they've built us, and we've gotten big together. We're just now taking that mindset and giving it to you guys, the Nick Damons of the world. You know, we have, gosh, we have a lot of people logged on to this. Each of you can take a piece of that pie. And we'll know when we're, we're cutting into the pie when they'll stop charging me $27.99 for a, a single t-shirt because it's personalized. There's a very big margins here. Okay, so here we go. There are a lot of big companies out there that use our technology, and they do amazing. Some of them are now publicly traded, okay? Um, be an early adopter here be like a Nick and all the other people that I can mention. Um, and it's just easy. We at Anajet, again, are hyper-focused on making this better every single day. And we'll get it so it's faster. We'll get it so it's more efficient. We'll get it so that, um, you know, Nick's called in for technical support. We, when, once we get enough of the same uh, conversations going on between tech support and users, we resolve the issue. We offer the free firmware and software upgrades, and that's how we make things um, that much easier. One so, thing, one thing with the ahead. tech support that I could just, I mean, you're talking to a person, like, and I don't know how many guys you have on tech support, but I've talked to the same, I don't know, three or four guys every time. So it's not like you're talking to somebody that doesn't know, you know, who you are or what you're doing, or I mean, it's, it's pretty personalized. Yeah, and we get, a, we get that a lot. And, you know, the one thing that I will mention, this is on, a, on totally side note here, is Nick is super cool. You guys can hear in his voice. I'm not paying him. He's not getting nothing out of this. This. He's a super busy guy. He worked till, what time did you work till last night, Nick? Uh, Monday was at 11 o'clock. Okay. And I'm out in here in California, and I wake up at 4.30, and at 5 o'clock I, I got an email from him, right? So he works hard, and he's trying to take advantage of this um, non-competitive market, but at the same time, he's super cool. And because he's super cool, the guys in the back love working for Nick. I walked back there. I said, hey, look, um, Vinny, one of our head techs, I said, Vinny, can you call Nick? No, Nick, you know, Nick Damon? I go, yeah, no problem. Boom. Within two minutes, he was on the phone with them. And that's a personable, uh, is that a word? It, that's, the, that's the stuff that you get from Anajet. 
Um, but it's very much reciprocated because we have people like Nick. Um, this screen, you guys, yeah, you make a lot of money. Promo products get it. Everyone gets it. Some of you might have seen this. Um, this is, in my opinion, the, the next big thing. And I actually wanted to talk to Nick about it because I got one of my guys here on the West Coast doing that. They opened up a shop at the mall, okay, and it's customized apparel. And they're getting lines of it. I saw another one, if you guys want to take this idea and run with it. I was at Gap Kids shopping on Sunday with my family. And we walked in, and this lady was, had a little table set up. And it was essentially, give me your kids' footprints and hands, and I'll make you some kind of pottery, like some kind of plaque with it. And I think it was made out of clay. And she was charging $68. And it was going to take six weeks to fulfill the order. And there was a line out the door. And I thought, if we set up a machine, a printer, same thing. We won't just do hands, but we'll do canvas art. We'll do ceramic tiles. We'll do t-shirts and hoodies, of course. We'll print on that Gap onesie that you bought. They would kill it. So actually, I took that idea, and I'll see if I can mature that with my guy here on the West Coast, because he's in a mall. Uh, and maybe he could uh, you know, co-op with, with Gap. But Ford totally loved what we were doing with SEMA last year. And look at that line, guys. There was nothing else that drew a call. Uh, None of the cars drew a crowd like that. It was you know, free t-shirts, of course, but nonetheless, great marketing. So here's Nick. Nick, you can, hey. you can take it. What's that? You can take it. This is all you. Go ahead. Um, OK, I mean, just to give you a background on us, we, we've been a commercial print company for 62 plus years. Um, and like Eugene said, you know, we wanted the opportunity to offer more to our customers. Um, hired a sales guy who's pretty gung ho, and uh, he's been bringing in the work, and we've been able to sustain, you know, a, a lot of a lot of orders in a very short period of time. Um, the, the note on there for the training, uh, as much as I wanted to go out to to California for a couple of days and hang out with Eugene, um, like you said, I am pretty busy. So we did the we did the online training in two hours. I mean, we we watched it, you know, more than once in some places to get a better idea. But uh, we're pretty much all self-taught. We've had a you know a couple bumps in the road, but like it, uh, Eugene said, also the tech support's taking care of us, and uh, you know we're we're on our way. But uh, that's um, that's our story in a nutshell. And so, you know, I can tell guys. I, I you know I I this morning alone, I'll probably have 15 new people that are just like Nick called in something, whether it was SEO marketing or their their desire to see what was out there trending, he called in. And um, we talk to new people all the time. I'll tell you right off the bat, it's the price of our printers that scare most people away. And, and rightfully so. We don't want to saturate the market. And we develop an incredible product that every single one of the sales guys and management here believes in. But more so, our printers, yeah, you drop twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 like Nick did, but we'll give you back six figures at the end of the year. That's that's not a problem for us at all. It's if you see the vision. Nick, after 60 plus years of being in a business, um, he saw that this is a direction, and I told him over the phone, this will be one of your main sources of income. And you know, he had mentioned the sales guy, and I just knew what kind of person he was. You can you can hear it. Yeah, he I mean, we've, legit. We've done we've done just to give you an, an idea. I mean. Ten grand since we got the machine. Fifteen hundred prints, weeks, right? Six, yeah, sixteen, six weeks. Yeah. So, I and mean, what I, you know, I have two guys back there working all day. <laughs> so Nick will be a multi. You know, the way that it's set up in some of the larger fulfillment companies is there's three MP10s, not side by side, but there's one to the left of a person, one in front of them, and to the right of them. And literally, they go in circles. They spin around. They put, a, put down a t-shirt, hoop it, hit print button. Then they go to the middle machine, then the right machine. By then, the left one's not done. It goes down uh, a dryer. In Nick's case, he would have two heat presses or three heat presses. Heat press it. Next one goes on. Second one's done. You can see how you can get really dizzy doing this. But every single time that he does that, you do that, you're making money. Nick, you, you do mostly contract right now, correct? Yeah, yeah. OK. So what I would, w the next step for Nick, in my opinion, is let's start doing a little bit of retail. Let's start selling the shirts ourselves. Now, that requires more manpowers, of course. It, it requires other things. But 
right now what he's doing is perfect for his audience. When you can see that you can um, create a different revenue stream by going straight to retail is when it becomes really super lucrative and fun. That's also on uh, zero advertising dollars. I haven't oh. advertised a bit. So, yeah. So imagine, and I know that Nick's working a ton of hours, and he has, he has a family at home and stuff too, but when you open the floodgates, and this is a really unique thing, guys, so here's the third thing I want you to take away. When you open up the floodgates and you advertise this, no minimum orders, unlimited colors, on-demand, on-demand printing, but you're going to pay a small premium, call me now. When you take that marketing approach, it's shooting fish in a barrel. We can also print on different substrates. I imagine right now, Nick, you're pretty busy. I, I know you called me for foil, so have you tried the foil yet? I haven't had time. <laughs> okay. can't, can't foil. Sell. Can't sell. Yeah. Printing shirts for customers to, to experiment. So once he gets there, I'll tell you guys right there, I like the Sierra Nevada one not only because I like beer, but because that looks super cool. Little small pieces of glass, little small pieces of ceramic. Ceramic tile is what I'm talking about. You can make beer coasters. You can make, um, you know, we just did a bunch of giveaway stuff for uh, when my daughter Samantha was born. Just really cool, unique designs. And you can do, you know, if you're doing small tiles, you can do 12 at once on our machine. 12 different pieces of print on in a minute, two minutes. Um, of course. These are um, all the, the markets that Nick can go into. Again, I always tell people, and Nick heard it when I talked to him, do you have the manpower and are you ready? You will work hours, especially if you buy one of our uh, less, less fast, I guess is a political way of saying it. If you don't buy an MP10 like Nick, you, you will be behind a machine printing for a very long time. Um, Empower. The, here's a big thing. Rico Printheads, guys. Rico is a stud in this space. We teamed up with them. We spent millions of dollars getting it right, and we continue to do so. They're the perfect partner for printheads. A printhead is the heart and soul of these machines. The printhead is the heart and soul of these machines. The control panel, the engineering, of course, is great. We, we've, had the, we've had the luxury of being, have had done this since 2005. And it started off as a very small company. The Sprint took us to where we were about a $20 million valuation. Uh, and now, who knows what we're valued at. The Empower is all the bad and the not so pretty out of the Sprint, the maintenance, the issues, all that stuff, the clogging. The Empower machine is what's really took us beyond. The Sprint's still a great machine, and we have a lot of respect for it. But the Empower machine is awesome. Um, Closed loop ink delivery system, you guys have probably heard that before. If not, you can ask your, your regional manager. That's what makes it special. Less ink waste uh, and, again, no clogged print heads. Um, so we, we came off with, uh, here comes the history again, Sprint, Empower machines, and then we constantly, again, firmware upgrades and all that good stuff. We eventually switched over to the iSeries, which is what Nick bought. And it's all we're selling now. It kind of connotes with uh, the Apple iPod, in which they're always upgrading it for you. But what we, this is what we did to make the MP5, the M Power machines, that more 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 robust. Um, and it's legitimate, and it's still being improved, by the way. And you'll you're privy to all that those improvements. Um, here we are again, free tech support for life, free training. So Nick, as he gets bigger, and he has a production guy. Uh, he has more printers. He's going to fly his printer guy out to us. Now, he pays for the plane ticket, but every other Friday from 9 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock at night, you come in and you learn from the master, people that know our equipment inside and out, even had a hand in building it. You sit in a classroom. There's only six printers in there, and we teach you and, you, and you learn, and then you print, and then you print, and then you print. You waste all of our T-shirts, you waste all of our ink, and you waste all of our foil, okay? And then we'll fly them back to you, and they can start doing it. Um, Nick is kind of an anomaly, but I was comfortable letting him do it. We had the same presentation, not interactive and no wasted ink and no wasted t-shirts. Um, we shipped him out the printer, sent him the YouTube channel, and Nick watched and set up his own equipment. And so Nick, tell me the good and the bad with that, if you don't mind. Setting up the equipment? Yeah, setting up the equipment without coming out to training. Do you feel that you lost anything? 
Um, I don't know if I really lost anything. I was actually talking to someone else that Angie had the other day and, and actually talking about coming out now and doing the training, kind of because we have our feet wet and maybe we'll get more out of it now um, than we would have originally just because we're I mean, so far away. But, uh, I mean, it wasn't hard. Um, like I said, it, it's all in the YouTube video. Um, we did go back and watch a couple parts there over again. The, the software is probably the easiest part out of all of it. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, I mean, some softwares, you know, you have 15 tabs across the top and, you know, bars down the side. There's, there's not really, there's not a whole lot of nuts and bolts. Um, it's pretty simple, and um, yeah, well, it wasn't you know wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, and so if I could add to, add to that, thanks, Nick. Is um, when we go to trade shows, all, all only RMs go to trade shows. A guy goes early to set up the booth, but RMs come in. We lift the printer out of the box, we put it on top of the table, we load the ink, and hit the buttons. Now, if something were to go wrong, like a printer fell off a a forklift the last time I went, I can't fix that. We had to call our tech support team, and they resolved it. But other than that, I'm printing, I need to print 200 t-shirts a day. I need to print 300 t-shirts a day. And I need to sell while I'm doing that. And I'm doing all that, and I'm not saying I'm the dumbest guy in the room, but I'm definitely not the smartest when it comes to these trade shows. So um, it's easy. The Empower when we, software. You know, oops, sorry. No, go ahead. I was, uh, when, um, we have a unique situation as well where, um, the room we were putting the engine in was being remodeled, so we actually set it up, called tech support. They walked us through filling all the lines. We printed some shirts, and that was a Friday, and they put the carpet in Monday, so we actually had to call back the tech support and package it all back up and move it out of the room for a day, and then when we called back, when it was it was more of a you know scheduling part on our, on our, uh, our end, but, I mean, you guys were more than helpful in you know, packaging it back up, taking it out, and we got it back in. We got it back up and running, and there wasn't a, you know, wasn't a big deal. And so let, let, me, let me add to that. So again, I, I'm not here to sugarcoat anything, and Nick is, is not either. We, we talked about what we we're going to talk about today, but I told him, you know, if there's good, bad, and ugly, let us know. What happened when we sold Nick his printers, it went out there, and it wasn't working properly for some reason. So they troubleshooted, and we, we didn't know what was going on, truthfully. So because we didn't know as a company, and you know, as we were going down our checklist, we still hadn't resolved the issue. Immediately, I got involved in the email process. I walked straight over to tech support with my boss, Carl, and we said, Ray, go get an MP10 ready to go. We might have to overnight him a printer so that he's not down. And this is when he had just started taking orders. Again, he has a very aggressive sales guy, and he has a ton of business out there, and he's been telling people what he's going to be doing. So here Nick is, excited, got his piece of equipment, and it's not working at 100%. And thankfully, right before we had FedEx, FedEx the package, it came down to like a power supply cord, Nick? Yeah, it was a power supply box. You guys ended up overnighting that to us, and we took the old one out and plugged a new one in, and it was fine. Right. So that's what we do here. Our relationship didn't really start. I mean, I talked to Nick. He drove four and a half hours in the bad weather that was um, here a few months ago. He saw the printer, saw the potential, saw the money-making ability of it, drove back, gave us a credit card, and off he went. But the relationship truly didn't start until we had gotten him the printer and helped him get through the process. Yes, it can do zip of putties, guys. Um, average cost of print, I'll defer that to Nick. Nick, what's your average cost of print on a white shirt? Average cost? Yeah. Oh, man, I mean, if it's, if it's uh, on a white shirt, if it's a left chest, like three cents. Three pennies is about right. Two cents. Uh, I'm looking down at the full front. I mean, uh, 10 cents, six cents. I'm just looking through my orders here because I keep track of all this. Uh, seven cents, um, three cents, you know, all, all 10 cents or under. Okay, so let me go, if you guys could go back to the, the screen here. So if I were to, so I'm going to use my mouse. If I click print right here, the next screen that pops up is our queue manager, which tells you how much time is going to be involved in that print for that, that particular shirt or that particular canvas art and how much ink is going to be used down at the penny. So Nick knows how much costs are going involved, whether it's labor or consumables, before he even commits to a job. And that's the beauty of our machines. Yes, on a white t-shirt, I've used a penny. Okay. When I print my, I print golf shirts sometimes, guys. So I'm going to go on a golf trip and I do the left sleeve or back of the collar. It costs me a penny. Well, it costs Anna a penny. And then, 
you'll go up to maybe 75 cents for a full white t-shirt, maybe a full canvas piece of art, and then a dark t-shirt, you're going to double that because of the white underbase. Um, yeah, my, my biggest my biggest thing charge has been a dollar sixty eight and that was uh I mean a full back white yellow I mean it was pretty elaborate and so we, here, here we are guys and not to, I'm not knocking any of my competition I welcome competition whether it's brother or Epson they're the two biggest players in this space now okay and there's Anajet, who's the behemoth but our business structures are completely different from the, the latter. Brother and Epson are international ink distribution companies. And you'll know that because you can buy a printer from them, whether it's a paper printer or anything else. You can get it on the cheap. They'll give you that little sample pack of ink, and then they'll start getting you when you start buying ink from them. right? And it uses a lot of ink. So they're an international ink distribution company. Us, no. We are a US, a proud US manufacturer of direct-to-garment printers here in Southern California. Now. Do we make money off of you on ink? Absolutely. Not me, though. There's not a single commission person on ink, and our ink prices are half the cost of our nearest competitor. Half the cost. And because we use Rico 100% stainless steel heads, you get ink costs like what Nick's talking about. That same image on my, my competition's printers, you're talking not pennies. You're talking 50 cents, a dollar. And when you start using white ink, you're talking 2 to $6 for a single T-shirt. You cannot... You cannot make money doing that. Um, our printers, Nick, 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 let's not talk about what you bought your printers for, okay? But I'll, I'll give you guys an MSRP. The MP5 is 29,950. That's what you get out of it. These are the specs. The MP10, because it has three um, more Rico print heads, is 39,950. None of you guys are going to pay that, okay? Call back your RM. If you guys don't have an RM, you can call me. Um, no, you're not paying that, that dollar amount. We'll, we'll take good care of you. And I took good care of Nick, too. Um, so, Shelly, I'm reading yours. Um, the, the ink, they tell you again. Um, the run time's right about here. Approximately, you'll get 60 lights and 30 dark t-shirts an hour on an MP5. And on Nick's MP10s, he could average 100 lights and 50 darks. It all depends on the, the font size. It depends on the operator. Um, and it depends on how your printer is set up, of course, via the settings. Nick, briefly read through that and tell me if that's about right for what you're doing. Um, yeah, it's pretty accurate. Okay. Um, like you said, I mean, we're not in the retail. And yeah, we're basically working with you know uh, our customers. All I've been dealing with. I mean, my my price hasn't been, hasn't been quite that much, but I mean, my my profits are are up there, easy. So maybe the next channel for Nick Damon and his company might be considering going straight to retail. Now that again, that involves more labor and everything else. Um, but I, let me just tell a quick story. There's people that make very funny t-shirts, and you guys can see them all over the internet, type in funny t-shirts. They take that one simple t-shirt and they sell it via you know, the web and shipping and handling and everything, but they're selling from 18 to 25 bucks. A t-shirt costs a dollar, a dollar fifty blank. Nick's using two pennies to maybe 50 cents worth of ink, at most under two dollars. He can sell those for 20 bucks. Now there's other things in, that you need to do in order to, to get those t-shirts made. Nick is obviously too busy, but once you dedicate a printer, or uh, a portion of your of your uh, of your employees in that direction. Sky is the limit, guys. Um, here are some people that have just made a killing, and Nick will be up there too. And I got about four or five other guys that are just crushing it. Um, Landau, you guys might have heard of him. He's legit. Nick actually drove from where he lives to. Henry Landau, just to see the printer in action. I had told him, don't do it. The weather's bad. Who, you, you just watch it on YouTube. <laughs> but he's the kind of guy that has to see it and, and operate. Correct, Nick? Yeah, I wanted to see it in person. And uh, I've actually built a relationship with Henry. I mean, when I was out there on a Tuesday. He called me Wednesday to make sure I made it back OK. Uh, anytime I have any questions, I call him. He, you know, he helps me out. Uh, it's been a pretty good relationship to have. 
and there's not too many Henry Landau's. Not not in reference to the the gross income and stuff like that. There's just not a lot of people that are open to sharing. Um, so so Nick Damon owns a golden goose that lays golden eggs. Okay. Usually, the way that we're all wired is we don't want to share that. We can talk about it, but we don't want to share that. You got a lot of people that buy our equipment, and I send them. I send future clients to them and say, hey, you know, will you tell them how good the printer is? And they won't. They'll say it's horrible, go buy a brother, go buy an Epson. And then I lose a deal and I'm like, why would you do that? They're insecure in their business model and their brand, so they don't want to lose business. And I, I, re I don't respect it, but I get it. Um, Chuck Northcutt just went to a trade show with him. We are worried as a company that he might retire soon. You know, he does very well for himself up in Seattle. Um, he has no debt makes a great amount of money, and that's his testimonial. I mean, he really makes those kinds of numbers, and um, you'll see something. A, Chuck will no longer take any uh, contract jobs, okay? He's straight to retail now, and he deserves to be that. But you can see how the, how the costs remain the same, but the profitability goes super high when you start doing straight to retail. Um, IHS Printing is right here down the street. Um, I've never had the pleasure of me meeting Jason Bryan, but I've heard great things about him. And um, he's legit, too. He's making a ton of money. And he, he used to get all of my referral business out here in, in L.A. and from San Diego and up. Um, but I've, I recently sold the printer to another guy who's doing well. Okay, so listen, speaking of, bottom right, this one right here, that's my guy, Adrian, doing amazing things, amazing things. Just got into a a wonderful up-and-coming hip clothing company. I don't think I'm allowed to say who it is, but it's very urban. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Um, canvas art, canvas art, canvas art. Uh, that's Dustin and Samantha, my clients. Um, the Bugatti one is another uh, one of Brett's clients. But look it, these guys are doing that with our printers. It's take an idea, take a great drawing, great everything else, and send it to the RIP software and print it. And people will pay you. This girl, I don't know who she is, but you might get 20 bucks for that. That's probably closer to 30, 40 cents worth of ink. The Bugatti looks like it's going to be over a dollar's worth of ink. The canvas art, 14 by 18, is going to cost you about 75 cents. Um, the bullion demand is that's a good 60 cents worth of ink. And uh, University of Kentucky, again, is about 75 cents. And you figure out what you would pay for that. And you can find out what kind of margins there are. Hey, hey Here's, Gene. Go ahead. Um, Speaking of Jason Bryan, I've also reached out to him and pretty much have the same relationship I do with Henry Landau that I have with him now. Um, awesome. you know, I got a question, and I reach out to them, and they're almost like uh, a mentor-type figure for us to, you know, um, they've done it. They've done it well, so when I want to know how to do it better, I usually contact them right away. And, uh, you know, I have their emails, their cell phones, and um, pretty, pretty another good relationship I've built with, with them. And you know, I don't, I don't. So I don't normally connect people with the Chuck Northcutts or the Henrys or the Jasons of the world. I don't, I don't. I personally, as a, as as a sales professional here at Anajet, um, I don't want to. I don't want to bother people, right? Because they don't get anything out of it, really. Nick, I found uh, that there was something different about him, and he could expand. So I mean, here, here here's a selfish point of view is I can sell Nick six printers. And I think I gave him six printers in about two and a half, three years if he stays uber focused <laughs> and can work from seven in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, but the, he, A, he sees the money potential in here. Um, so I knew that that, that was worth the in, investment. Um, Jason's probably gained a lot out of him. He has a new contact out there on the East Coast. Henry Landau loves the fact that young people are getting involved in this. and. He knows the direction of the market. He's been doing printing for years. So um, it's awesome that, that Nick would say something like that because it's just absolutely the truth. I mean, and I, I don't even think I got Jason to you. I'm pretty sure I just saw him on YouTube and called him and said. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, Henry is definitely through you. But Jason, I, I saw, I read his uh, story on your, your newsletter or whatever it was and reached out to him. And that's another thing, guys. We don't, I mean, listen. We don't want to sugarcoat anything. We want to give you guys what le legitimately happens on this space. Next week, I'll have you know 
I'll have Samantha and Dustin on. The week afterward, I'll, I'll, I can have five people lined up. Now, out of the seven people I can do, I can call right now, I'll tell you six of them won't do it. Five of them won't do it. So, you know, Nick is definitely uh, someone that understands that other people helped him get into where he is right now, and he's running with the torch, uh, and, he's, and he's gracious about that. So, again, Nick, thanks for that. You guys write this down. If you're in Atlantic City, um, if you're in... Is that Germany? That's weird, but if you are, um, here's where we're going to be attending. And again, we always have um, customer support here. Uh, we have your RMs here. Again, if you don't have um, an RM, you can call me directly and I'll take good care of you. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you can type them in and I'll answer the ones that I don't have. Um, but as of right now, if anyone's typing, great. But I want to ask Nick to get on the phone and, and, and do this. If you guys are not ready to buy a printer, and if Nick is willing to take on some contract jobs, if you guys need his services or need to talk to him, right, not a sales guy, give him a call. So Nick, if you could give your contact information right now, I'd appreciate it. You know, my email or phone number? Or Both. Let's do it all. Uh, you guys can email me. It's just Nick, N-I-C-K, at Damon, D-A-M-I-N, printing, P-R-I-N-T-I-N-G dot com. And um, phone number here is 814-472-953. It's on our website, too, uh, DamonPrinting.com. So, again, it's DamonPrinting.com as a website, and you can go directly to him at Nick at DamonPrinting.com. Uh, if you guys wanted to write down my telephone number directly, it's area code 714-371-9178. Again, it's Eugene. E-U-G-E-N-E, -E, last name is Lee, L-E-E, 714-371-9178. Nick, if you have to run, you can run. Um, what are the settings for the foil, Carlton? It, simply put, all foil needs, the technology is the perfect combination of white ink and CMYK. And foil on top, and then you just put in the heat press. You can go solid if you want by decreasing the amount of white ink and increasing the, pre the pressure of the heat press. If you have any questions about that, Carlton, call our tech support team. They're here for you. And um, Nick's actually starting to do foil now, too, in the future, right, Nick? Yep, yep. So As we uh, find some time to stop printing shirts. <laughs> so what I want, this is the final thing I want you guys to take from this. To become the next Nick Damon, Henry Landell, all these people that have pioneered it's hard work, it's the right equipment, and you've got to have grit. You've got to go out there and fight through the hours of standing behind a printer, or you have to be able to pay somebody to do it, because the business is out there. And I've seen it. I've seen people grow from one printer to 40, 50 printers. Um, I've seen people come hat in hand and fly off in a private jet eventually. We've seen these things, and we want to grow with each and, one, each and every one of you. So again, if any questions, Eugene, 714-371. 9178. Um, if you have any questions for Nick, again, it's Nick, N-I-C-K, at Damon, D-A-M-I-N, printing.com. Um, so with that, Nick, any final words? Yeah, good luck, guys. And Nick, thanks for spending an hour with us. Guys, we kept it under 50 minutes, so um, you're welcome. Uh, Nick, you can go. Thank you very much. There's a few more questions coming on, and um, I'll answer those, and we'll talk. Okay, sounds good. See you guys. All right. Um, PC. What type of PC can you use? Anything, guys. I would recommend a $200 laptop that sits on top of the printer, and you just send, you email graphics to it and find things on Google or whatever it might be. Um, they are, a lot of our designers are Mac-based, and what they, the best thing to do, I mean, you can always, um, uh, what is it called? Parallels run parallels in boot camp? No. Buy a $200 PC. Just create all your designs on, on your Mac and then send them over that way. Um, yeah, everything is going to be an MP, everything is going to be i-series moving on, guys. Um, which kind of brings me to one point. If you buy anything third party, we will not support it. Um, Anajet had, a, had a, a few months where people were buying used printers online, great stories online, you know, unicorns and rainbows. When they, bought the, when they got the printer, even though it had those Ricoh print heads in them, things weren't working right. 
So the only way that we can diagnose it is you have to ship it to us. It's about three to five hundred dollars, depending on where you live, and we will factory refurbish the printers. Um, once we factory refurbish the printers, it's on your dime, of course. It ranges from, you know, a thousand to five thousand dollars. Then you have to buy a warranty from us, and then we'll give you the free tech support, free training, and all that good stuff. The the moral of the story is buy it from us. We are a U.S. manufacturer, and it's you, you will. You will eventually, through stress, time, and money out of pocket, save money by buying through us. Um, we do not have any factory refurbished printers as we speak right now. We sold out. We have, we have maybe one or two MP10s. So excuse me, the Empower 5s, we do not have any in stock right now. And the waiting list is through the roof. There might be some refurbished sprints out there if you guys want to get involved first, uh, but you fully have to know that you're going to have to eventually upgrade into an Empower machine because they're more robust and faster. Um, all these other questions I have previously answered. So thank you for listening in, guys. I very much appreciate it. Again, it's Eugene. Um, I want to make money with you. I sincerely do. Uh, contact your local RM, your, your RM, you can call the 800 number and, and ask for whoever you're working with. Uh, if you need to talk to me, I gave you my information. And you can email me at elee -E at anajet.com. With that, let's conclude it. You guys have a wonderful day. For all the moms, happy Mother's Day, please, okay? Uh, God bless you all, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.